what we now see is a slide on enterprise value and equity value. Folks, this is an extremely, extremely important slide. If you want, just put a big star and say must know. You must know this slide in and out. So where do we begin? First of all, we'll look at equity value. Equity value is simply price per share times the share is outstanding. Other terms commonly are known as market value as well as market capitalization. This one you should have already known what the formula is. And folks, if you didn't know what this is, just pretend you do because this is a fundamental core concept. Price times shares outstanding gets you the equity value, market cap, market value, synonymous terms. Now I want to address a particular point, enterprise value. What we actually care about in evaluation of a firm is the enterprise value, not just the equity. What is enterprise value? Well, I always say that finance is not rocket science. We just like to pretend it is to justify our high pay. What I mean by that is if you look at each term, each term in finance, and if you were to ask yourself, what exactly does this mean? It is very straightforward. Define it using itself. What is enterprise value? Very simply, it's the value of the enterprise. Now, I know what you're thinking. My seventh grade English teacher would come up, smack behind the back sign and say, nope, you can't use your own word to define itself. But when you truly think about it, it actually makes a lot of sense. What is the enterprise? Enterprise is the entire operation, the entire firm, the entire company. So what we were trying to value is the value of this entire operation, the entire enterprise. Now, said more concretely, what we are trying to really capture on our slide is to say that enterprise value actually equals all forms of capital. Enterprise value equals all forms of capital of which equity value is merely but one component of equity. The definition of enterprise value, sometimes commonly known as levered market cap as well, is simply the equity value plus net debt plus preferred. To this, I will add another term called minority interest. And when we look at minority interest, Here's what we want to see. Um, here's what we mean by this. We want to say form of capital is equity value. That's one source of capital that we receive to fund and to build our business. We also needed debt. We also may have issued preferred. And I'm going to come back to this minor interest in a second. Other terms for enterprise value are also called aggregate value, total capitalization, leverage value, or transaction value, but this is more in a deal context. Now, let's take a look at exactly what this means. Note that this diagram is not drawn to scale, but we have equity value, which usually is the core of where we get our money from. To that, we also add net debt and preferred stock. Usually, when we ask somebody, what is the value of, let's say, Microsoft, people would just say, oh, it's $25 a share or whatever the current stock price is. Or they might actually give you that market cap and multiply by the shares outstanding. But that is not the correct number. That is only one component of capital. A firm will get their sources of capital from multiple sources. Again, equity, preferred, net debt, etc. To which we add minor interest. Let me come back to that in a second. And so when we look at enterprise value, this means that, again, the entire value of the entire firm, the entire operations, the enterprise, whereas equity is merely but one component of capital. Very important, very important here. Now, if all of these forms of capital make up the enterprise value, there's two comments now to make. Why do we include minority interest? What is minority interest? And also, what is, uh, do we, how do we want to include and treat capital leases? For that, let's turn to an exhibit here. Let's take a look at what we exactly mean by minority, minority interest. Remember, I gave you a definition of how to define everything. Take itself, switch, switch it around. What is minority interest? Minority interest is simply interest at a minority. Okay, what does that really mean? What that means is, let's say I have a company. Let's say I'm Walmart. Walmart owns, hypothetically, 60% of a Japanese retailer called Seiyu. Because they reach 60%, once you reach 50%, you must consolidate all of your financials of that subsidiary onto your books. In other words, 100% of the income statement, the balance sheet, and the cash flow must be included in this calculation in your uh, financial statements. If 100% must be included, however, we only own 60%. So that means 40% of this on the income statement will go out as a minority interest expense. Think of this as a quote unquote dividend or the pro rata share of the minority stakeholders share in that particular subsidiary. However, for purposes of valuation, we also want to include this number in our quote unquote net debt numbers. It's another form of capital of enterprise value. Why exactly is that the case? Well, because the US and international gap says once you reach 50%, you must consolidate. Well, if that's the case on the balance sheet, I might have, let's say, hypothetically said, oh, let me, bought, I bought this company for $100. However, that was the total valuation. I only spent $60 because the $60 is what I, I only own 60%. That must mean that there's $40 on the books that will show up now, also called minority interest investments, 
or minority interest on the liability section of your balance sheet. In other words, because you were forced to consolidate 100% of the income statement, the assets, the liabilities, as well as the cash flow, because you were forced to consolidate 100% of that, all of the value must be placed on your balance sheet. If 100% must be placed on the balance sheet, well, I have to take a deduction in order for me to balance because 40% of that, $40 in this case, is actually owned by somebody else. So now the question becomes, why do we want to include this $40 into our enterprise value calculation? We want to include this enterprise value calculation, this number in there, for the very simple reason that this is another quote-unquote form of capital used to get me that 100%. In other words, this is a form of capital that grossed up my income statement and balance sheet to reflect the full reported numbers. And because of the accounting systems, because this has to be grossed up to 100%, the full reported method, $40 of this liability, you can treat it as if I borrowed, quote unquote, as if I borrowed this $40 to fund the 100% acquisition of this company. Because I used 100 had to get 100% of this onto my books, it's as if I borrowed this $40 to fund 100% of the acquisition. And because I borrowed that $40 to fund this acquisition, that is why we would treat this as if it were debt. Now, that doesn't mean that it is debt. It's not an interest-bearing negotiated security. However, this is in our enterprise value. This is what we were trying to figure out. What is the full capital used to fund my entire business or my entire enterprise. And that is why you want to include minority interest. Now, another point that people always ask is, aside from minority interest, fine, I understand that this is a form of capital used to fund my business, so include minority interest in my total enterprise value calculation. In other words, if I had to reproduce all of Walmart's financials, all of my target company's financials, how much capital do I need to rebuild this firm? I need to have borrowed from my equity guys, for my debt guys, for my preferred, as well as for my minority interest to reproduce the exact financials that this firm now has. So the another question becomes, do you want to include capital leases? Capital leases, let's take a look at capital leases.